need to get two grams of flour out. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, what the heck. All right. You want to make sure your flour is nice and moist. Very important. 0.7. One. One 1.8. Two point three. It's a little much. We want to put two grams exactly. Let's drop it in. Two point oh. There we go. All right. The next step is to load it up. I've got my parchment paper already cut and ready to go. Let's load it. I just stuff them in, real simple. I don't need to mess around. Who's got time to mess around? Use your piston to, to load it. Press everything down in there. Get that flour compacted in there. Who needs a big old electric rosin press when you've got a slug 33, huh? Now, I'm gonna put my seep kit disc on top. This is a silicone disc, it goes right on top. Just like so. Got a little bit of flour on the bottom there. Disc on the top, ready to go. Voila. We want to fold this. We want to have a little shelf on the parchment. This is just Reynolds parchment paper, nothing special. I like Reynolds paper. And this is going to catch our rosin, okay? And let's open this up. We want to put that right in the center there. Just like this. And when we place your, your slug in here, you want to place it towards the top, hold it, and then tighten it just like that. See how the top of the slug is level with the top of the vise? That's what we want. We want room for the rosin to drip down below, okay? Next step is to top off the torch. This is a Sandico torch or actually a, uh, a Whippet torch. These are really uh, inexpensive torches, but they're very good, actually. They've got a nice flame adjustment, okay? So, two grams of flour in. Um, flour is nice and moist. I know the resin content is there because I grew it myself. This flower is old, I have to tell you guys. It's pretty old. Probably, well, this one's not marked, but I'm going to say it's probably from 2020. Outdoor. All right, let's get the timer going. We're going to go for two minutes. Now, what I like to do is rest. When I'm, when I'm heating, I don't, I'm going to heat the very back. And just to keep everything nice and steady, I'm going to rest the tip of the torch right on this shelf here, just like that. And this part's on the table. That way, I'm not moving around and, you know, it just keeps it nice and steady. And what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to put the tip right there, that, the tip of that inner cone, I'm going to put right on the back of my slug. Let's, let's get started. And let's go. For small batch, personal use rosin, flour to rosin extractions, it doesn't get any better than a Slug 33. It just doesn't. You know, if the odds are you probably have a vice in your garage that will work, 
there's probably a good chance you're already doing dabs. So you probably already have a torch. And any torch will really work. You might have a butane torch, that's fine too, or a propane torch, that works as well. But there's a good chance that you might have a, a vice in your garage. And if you don't, they're very inexpensive as well, especially used ones. You probably have a torch. If not, they're inexpensive as well. Your only investment is a deuce, a Slug 33 deuce, which these are $79.99. So in your best case scenario, $79, 80 bucks, and you're making rosin forever. You've got a tool that's going to extract rosin from your flower or your, uh, your farmer's keef. Uh, works great for Keith. The only thing it really doesn't work on is bubble hash. And you're making fresh rosin like that. Small batch, whenever you need it, fresh, on demand. In less than a couple of minutes. I mean, you saw how quick I loaded that. That was quick, fast, boom, we're almost up here, two minutes. And you know what? You probably have a cell phone with a timer on it. So you, you already have, most likely you already have this set up. All you need is the Slug 33 and you're ready to roll. Two minutes and we are gonna go to 205, just cause I feel lucky. Slow at the end, I like to go nice and slow. You can see the rosin starting to come out here, right here. Look at that. But we want it to ooze out. A little bit of steam is okay. See how the slug pops back a little bit? That's fine. It's gonna do that because the pressure gets so great inside, it's gonna pop back just a little bit. And the, the, th the thing that's important is you just keep going, keep going. Keep tightening, keep tightening. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Look at that. A beautiful extraction. You know what? That was just a, just a touch on the hot side. Just a touch. But don't, don't, don't get me wrong. This rosin is extremely potent. Might have lost a little bit of flavor there, okay? It's not as, uh, it's not perfectly dialed in at this point. But this is a great opportunity for me to show you uh, what I would do next to get it right at that sweet spot. So ideally, we want the rosin to just bubble out, just without really making any noise at all. Just kind of bubble out and just kind of ooze out. Anytime you can hear crackling or popping, you know, then you know that it's just a little bit on the hot side. So you have two choices. Number one, turn your flame down, which is what I'm going to do. Just like that. There we go. Turn the flame down just a tiny bit. Or I could heat for less time. I could have done that too. I could have just kept the torch where it was, and instead of heating for 205 like I did, Heat for 145. Either one of those would have worked. I decided to turn the heat down, my flame down just a tad. And that'll probably, now on my next extraction, I'll, be, I'll bet you that'll probably get me right where I wanna be, where that rosin just oozes out, just bubbles out nice and quietly without any crackling, any popping, without burning off any of the, uh, of the uh, terpenes. You know, you can make the same mistake with an electric uh, rosin press. You know, you get some, you go to the, 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 you get some new flour you've never pressed before. Okay, what do you do? You gotta select the temperature, right? So you, so you select, let's say 210, 220, whatever it may be, 195 or whatever, and you do an extraction, you do your press, and you're basically going to get the same thing. You know, it's going to crack, it's going to pop a little bit, and you go, oh, okay, well, let me just turn down 
the temperature, let me turn it down to 195 or let me turn it down to 200, whatever it may be. You're doing the same thing with your Slug 33. The only difference is you're not digitally turning down the temperature. You're turning it down by either turning down the flame intensity or just by heating for less time. It's the exact same thing. The learning curve is the same. There's really no difference. The only difference is your Slug 33 is gonna last you the rest of your freaking life. It's never gonna break down. You're never gonna, you don't have hydraulics to deal with. You don't have repairs to deal with. There's no uh, uh, hooking up installation. There's no jacks. There's no expensive manual or, 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 you know, electronics to deal with. There's no fuses. There's no heating elements. There's no cords, there's no electricity, there's nothing. It's just you, your deuce, your flower, and your torch, and a vice, and you're making rosin for the rest of your life. And once you get good at it, once you figure it out, which really takes just a couple of presses usually, you know, if you're brand new to the game, about three, maybe three uh, extractions, three practice runs, and by the third or the fourth one, you found the sweet spot and you're dialed in. Okay, so let's get this turkey out of here. So I'm gonna open up my hot strap. Hot straps are made from genuine full grain leather, okay? No cheap crap here, the real deal. Brass button studs, okay? And we're gonna slide this right underneath this hot slug here. And then once I got a grip on it, I'm gonna release. And there we go. And now I can just peel off my oh wow look at that that's a nice yield you know it smells good for as old as it is it smells really good that was a nice yield look at that yield nice yield yes it's dark I know all you rosin all you raw race rosin racists out there, okay? Just I can hear you now. Take it easy, take it easy. Oh, that rosin is so uh, dark, man. Dark rosin. It's shit. You burned it. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the deal. Let me just tell you about dark rosin, okay? Dark rosin will get you lit off your ass, okay? I guarantee you, you smoke this, number one, it's gonna taste good. Might not taste as good as if it would have been, you know, a little bit less temperature or if it would have been fresher flour too. Gotta to keep in mind, this is outdoor flour, number one. Flour rosin is darker than hash rosin. You know, all this Instagram rosin that you're looking at, all this rosin that looks like it's, that's gold and beautiful, okay? Clear, whatever. Most of that rosin is made from hash. Bubble hash, it's not flower rosin. Flower rosin is typically darker. Now, if you look at my Instagram, I've got flower rosin on, here, on there that looks beautiful. Yellow, I mean, it's golden, it's gorgeous. And I've got dark rosin, so I've got a little bit of both. But depending on the flower, how old the flower is, how long it's been aged and cured, is all gonna depend on the color. The color has nothing to do with the taste. The color of the rosin has nothing to do with the potency. Let's get that perfectly straight. So all you rosin racists out there, keep your, your, you know, your dark rosin comments to yourself. We already know about the, the color of rosin, okay? This, this rosin smells really good, but wow, what a nice yield that was, okay? So there you go. Now let's talk about cleaning. Let's clean this bad boy. So we're ready for our next press. Okay, so it's hot, we don't wanna to touch it, but here's what we're gonna do, we wanna clean it. And we gotta get this puck out of here. So how do we get the puck out? We're gonna turn it upside down, first thing we're gonna do. Then we're gonna take our hot strap and we're gonna lift the Slug 33 off of the piston. Then we're gonna take the hot strap, I should probably turn it right side up, and we're gonna grab the spacer and take it off, okay? Then we're gonna go back over here, grab the barrel, and we're gonna put it back on and bam, the plunger or the piston goes right through and takes, pushes the puck right out, okay? Next, I can take, get rid of that little bit of flour on my finger there. I can take the silicone disc, put it back in its holder right here 
just like so. Fits right into your hot strap right there so you don't lose it. It's always there when you want it. Now, take the barrel back off. Go back over here, grab the spacer, put it back on the plunger or the piston, whatever you want to call it. Put the barrel back on. Now I'm going to grab, grab it from here, and now I can clean it. And watch how easy it is to clean your Slug 33. All I gotta do is wipe off the face, just like this, with a paper towel or a napkin is, is good. This is a Kleenex here. And there we go, clean, ready to go. And I'll just set it like this, maybe right here on the, on the vise. Clean up my little mess here, voila, there we go. Let that cool off. Take my fresh rosin over to my, however I wanna enjoy it, my bong or whatever it may be, vaporizer, DynaVap, whatever you're using and I can sit back and enjoy my fresh rosin while my Slug 33 cools off. And tomorrow we'll repeat the process, or the next day, or, or whenever. But your Slug 33, you know, I will say this, there's only one thing your Slug 33 isn't good at, and that is mass production, scale, okay? If you've got ounces and ounces of herb that you need to press into rosin, then you know what? I'm gonna steer you away from the Slug 33. It's not the, it's not for you. But if it's just for, you want rosin just for personal use, you want fresh rosin on demand for your own personal use, and you want a tool that's gonna re be reliable, is gonna be there, it's gonna work every time, all the time, the Slug 33 system is for you. So put your comments down below, whether you love it, whether you hate it, I don't care. Put your comments down below. Please subscribe to the channel too. Um, you know, hey, it helps me with the algorithm. Hit the button, the little uh, notification button there, that's important. Helps me out a lot. And uh, put your questions down below and we'll talk about it. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.